Hello everyone and welcome to the summit. My presentation today will focus on Telco IT data infrastructure insights. As humankind has developed from the agricultural economy to the industrial economy and then to today's digital economy, the factors of production have also changed from land and labor to capital and technology to data. In fact, data has now replaced oil as the world's most valuable resource. Presented as information, data produces commercial insights and values. IT infrastructure consists of three parts, compute, storage, and networking. Storage is where enormous amounts of this valuable data resides. So it is an important part of the IT infrastructure that deserves particular attention. Telcos have evolved from network operators to network plus cloud plus AI operators. We can classify telco IT systems into three domains to help us gain insights into their development and requirements. The production domain is the first domain. Systems in this domain provide production services for intelligent connections and are used to increase the ARPU and overall revenue. BSS, OSS, and video systems are usually assigned to this domain. The second domain is called the analytics domain. Based on telco's data, systems in this domain provide analytical services to help telcos improve internal efficiency and realize data monetization. This domain typically includes big data platforms and AI applications. The last domain is the innovative to be domain. As the name indicates, systems provide innovative services in this domain to help expand to be services and seize business opportunities. This domain includes both innovative cloud native platforms and to be applications, including big data, AI, and HPC applications. BSS is an important system in the production domain. One of its major functions is to help keep track of every user's data usage and implement charging and billing functions. Let's look at Carrier L as an example of how BSS is evolving. They hope to quickly deploy 5G services to seize market share and increase the average revenue per user. According to their statistics, 5G will boost data usage by over three times and the ARPU by more than 44%. As such, 5G brings additional load for L's BSS systems. When we look at the capacity requirements of 1 million subscribers moving to 5G as an example, the data volume will grow by 7.5 times while the latency must be reduced to 1 eighth of the original 4G. Therefore, it requires extremely high performance, reliability, and scalability to accommodate this data surge. To be specific, the latency needs to be reduced from 4 milliseconds down to half of a millisecond while also supporting the transactional rate increase that the BSS applications will demand. Reliability must also be improved from 5 nines to 6 nines or even beyond as minutes of downtime each year can no longer be tolerated. The solution also must non-disruptively and economically scale over this wide range and be able to handle further increases as Carrier L's business grows. For carriers like L to compete in the 5G era, they require storage to meet their high performance, high reliability, and high scalability requirements. OSS provides operational support for telcos. Since new sites need to be added in hotspot areas during 5G network deployment, the any density of 5G is 1.25 times that of 4G. The number of KPIs of each NE increases 1.2 times. This leads to a 50% increase 
in basic OSS data volume. As the number of NEs increases, automated O&M becomes an inevitable requirement, and the more data is required for automated network planning and optimization. The CHR data sampled for each NMS increases from 100 gigabytes per hour to 275 gigabytes per hour. In addition, post-analysis is changed to pre-analysis and the storage duration increases from 7 days to 90 days. Based on this 2.75 fold increase in data traffic multiplied by the expected 12.8 fold increase in data storage duration, we can expect CHR data volumes to increase by 35 times. In this example we have of Carrier C, we can see that the OSS data volume will increase by 8 times, which leads to the requirement for storage resource pooling capabilities and effective and efficient resource provisioning, operation, and maintenance. This means that the storage silos must be replaced by a resource pool which allows resource utilizations to be increased from today's less than 50% to more than 70% and increase Carrier C's flexibility. In addition, continuous NE capacity expansion takes about three months. Therefore, the capacity expansion efficiency needs to be improved and allow the time to market to be shortened. Adopting SLA-based automation can bring those months down to just hours or even minutes, making Carrier C more agile. This means that automated O&M is also required to accelerate the efficiency, keeping operational costs under control and increasing service reliability. In the 5G era, video will become a major revenue source for telcos. Let's look at Carrier M as an example. This company has adopted the internet plus digital content strategy to increase revenue. Video is evolving from HD at 1080p to Ultra HD at 4K and VR. An hour of 1080p video requires about 5 gigabytes of storage capacity, whereas in 4K that same video would require 15 gigabytes of storage capacity, and as a VR that video would require 180 gigabytes. According to the UHD capacity plan and user development program of Carrier M, their video capacity demands will increase from 15 petabytes to 152 petabytes over a five-year period. And the total data transfer volume will also grow by more than 10 times. However, their revenue over this same period is projected to rise from 6 billion to only 10 billion. That's just an increase of 66%. Therefore, their data infrastructure must support large-scale expansion within a small footprint in the data hall and come with a significantly lower TCO per capacity in order to be successful in their internet plus digital content business plan. As the data volume in the production domain increases, including BSS, OSS, other business systems, and third-party data sources, the data volume evolved in big data analysis source. The value within the data available to telcos is only beginning to be realized, and much of the data has yet to be tapped for value. The data being made available for big data analysis will be increasing as the potential for benefits from these other sources of data are realized. In addition, to unleash more data value, the data storage period also must be prolonged. In many cases, the data analysis period is increasing from one month to three months or even six months. Let's take Carrier T as an example. In 2019, their storage capacity for big data analysis was 35 petabytes. They estimate that by 2021, this year, their big data capacity requirements will increase by almost five times to 160 petabytes.
A five-fold data growth requires high scalability of data infrastructure and support for multiple services. In addition, big data applications are gradually becoming production applications, meaning analytics data now needs to be as reliable as any other mission critical data and it must meet all other requirements and expectations for production data. AI applications have been widely used in various industries for functions such as intelligent chatbot services and digital marketing for telcos and financial fraud prevention for banks. AI applications cannot be successful without the training and verification from a large amount of data. This data must be curated and prepared before analysis of its content can begin. Operations such as data collection, sanitization, and loading require high write bandwidths and the ability to store information at gigabytes per second levels. Model training needs high random IOPS capabilities, each with millisecond level read latencies, to complete thousands of iterations of calculations, and optimizations. A model verification and evaluation phase additionally needs multi-phase data access to tune parameters, create inferences, and support insight development. Finally, both raw source data and training data sets need lifecycle management, including backup and archiving of data and models. Analytics and AI applications are our second IT domain. And as we have seen, they require a data infrastructure with high bandwidths, low latency, multi-protocol convergence, and intelligent tiering of hot, warm, and cold data. Business agility is critical for innovative services. The traditional waterfall development model cannot meet the requirements of business agility today. Currently, we follow the golden 20-day rule, which compels us to complete multiple iterations and service releases within a short period of time. Project schedules that used to span months or even years are now expected to roll out products in days or even hours. Cloud Native has become the de facto standard for agile enterprise architecture and a key technology to DevOps and continuous delivery capability. Cloud native development depends on container technology and in most scenarios, distributed databases to store status information. Innovative services requires an infrastructure that can support this rapidly changing environment. Cloud native architectures, container technology, and distributed databases. These data infrastructures must be highly reliable, often with 24-7 online operating requirements and demand for geo-redundant three data center disaster recovery solutions. These are, after all, enterprise applications and cannot compromise on quality for the sake of agility, but rather push the storage infrastructure to new levels of reliability, performance, flexibility, and efficiency. Again, the ability to manage operations in such a rapidly changing environment requires high levels of automation and autonomous enforcement of SLAs. In addition, cloud native applications also need to support smooth migration to and from public clouds. A huge amount of data drives the development of high-performance computing. Telcos can take advantage of high-performance computing as a new opportunity for two business services, serving industry applications such as genome sequencing, remote sensing, oil and gas exploration, and automated driving. HPC has shifted toward high-performance data analytics, or HPDA, and HPC-based AI convergence. The growth of HPDA and HPC-based AI is much faster than that of traditional HPC. The challenges of HPC for data infrastructure lie in hybrid workloads, where both high IOPS and high bandwidth are required, as well as data security, 
reliability, and data governance. So to summarize, we face challenges in every domain, production, analytics, and innovative services. These challenges arise from the increasing rate of data growth and growing business agility needs. Key requirements for storage, including high performance, reliability and scalability, resource pooling, effective resource provisioning, and large-scale expansion, multi-service support, SLA-based automation, and data mobility, migration, and tiering, including support for the public cloud. We suggest that there are three major objectives which embrace these requirements and can satisfy many of your storage needs. First, we need to build a converged storage resource pool that can support multiple services, each with high performance, such as less than one millisecond latency and six nines of reliability. Second, we require highly automated, intelligent data management to allocate storage resources based on service level agreements and implement data mobility on demand. Finally, we need to open data services toward the cloud. Multiple deployment models such as edge, data center, private cloud, and public cloud can coexist for long periods of time. So we must support smooth evolution between these development models while supporting a wide variety of agile business needs. I hope you found these brief insights on Telco IT data infrastructure useful. Thank you for listening and please enjoy the rest of your summit.